Good evening and welcome to the February 18th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. As a point of order, I would ask you all to turn off your cell phones during the meeting. And at this time, I ask you to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, where'd the flag go? It's over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Secretary Baker, could you take roll? Yes. President Singer? Here. Vice President McFarland? Here. Secretary Baker? Here. Treasurer Fidel? Here. Member Blasey? Here. Member Lauterbach? Here. And Member Rausch? Here. Great. All seven here. All seven. Great. Uh, moving into the consent agenda, we have uh, several items. We have item 2.1, which is approval of the minutes from January. Item 2.2, which are resignations. Item 2.3, which are payment of the school system bills. And item 2.4, which are legal invoices. If there are no objections, these items will be adopted. Does anyone uh, want to remove anything from the consent agenda? No objections, so then these items will be adopted. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve item 2.1 through 2.4 as listed on the minutes. Moved by McFarland, support by Lauterbach. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Moving into item three, which is Board of Education Matters, presentations <coughs> to the board. I'll turn it over to Mr. Sherrill. And our first shining star of the evening is Diane White. If Diane would come up and join me, and I'll read a little bit about you while you're coming up, Diane. Ms. White joined the MPS team in 2007 as a math teacher at Jefferson Middle School. For the past several years, Diane has taught math, program, programming, and computer science at H.H. Dow High School. Ms. White earned her Bachelor's of Science degree in Education from Texas State University in 1990 and her Master's degree in Instructional Technology from the University of Houston in 1995. This is Diane's second shining star. She reserves her first shining star in April of 2015. I think she's our first one. Diane was nominated for a shining star by several MPS staff members. Among their comments were the following. Diane is always willing to pitch in and help other staff members, and she goes to the extra mile for students. Diane schedules and facilitates the American Mathematics Competition for Dow High students, which was rescheduled a couple times because of <laughs> snow days, right? Um, she also works with after-school tutoring for the SAT for our math students. Everything Diane does is with a smile. Diane is always willing to accept new challenges and take on more responsibility in the school and the math department at Dow High, from taking on new classes to being the first one to volunteer to the lead new student clubs. She manages the math club, the programming club, the, cl the game design club, and is also the team mom for the girls' varsity swim team. Mrs. White goes above and beyond, both in the classroom and outside of her classroom. Diane is the first one to offer help in any way for students and her colleagues. She is very kind and patient. She is an amazing teacher, and I'm so glad that I get to work with her. Congratulations, Diane. Our second shining star is actually a couple, and they were unable to make it tonight as they had a prior commitment, so let me read a little bit about them. Marty and Laura Hollenbach is our, our second shining star group. As you may remember, Marty retired from Midland Public Schools in 2016 after more than 25 years with Midland Public Schools. He joined the MPS staff in 1993 as a PE teacher at Northeast Intermediate in Midland wrestling, track, and cross country. My, Marty earned his bachelor's degree from Western Michigan University in 1983 and his master's degree from Central Michigan University in 1998. In 2016, Marty received Midland High's Saginaw Valley Teacher of the Year Award. After his retirement, Marty continues to coach cross country for the Midland High Chemics. Laura played an important role for MPS for several years. Laura Hollenbeck graciously volunteered her time as our Bravo Volunteer Coordinator. The Hollenbachs were nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS teacher. Among her comments were the following. 
During exam week, Marty and Laura did an all-out cleaning job in the fitness lab at Midland High. They scrubbed the windowsills, the floor, and every aerobic piece of equipment and training equipment. They cleaned everything by hand and then arranged it back into the room. They also fixed some of the equipment that had been broken too long and put together some new equipment. Mm -hmm. The room has never been cleaner. Marty and Laura continuously give back to Midland High as they are chemics for life. So congratulations, Marty and Laura. <laughs> and I'm going to let Penny Miller Nielsen introduce the second presentation this evening. Well, sure. I, I actually am going to defer to Adrian and Allison and our team of chief science officers who are here tonight to share information about this amazing program. Thanks, Penny. I'm Adrienne Cole, and I'm the director of STEM at SBSU. I'm also the regional lead for the CSO program or chief science officer program here in the Great Lakes Bay region. And I'm Jen Lennon, the advisor for the CSOs at Northeast Middle School. I'm Emily Krenzlein, and I am the CSO at Northeast Middle School. My partner is Taylor Brott, but unfortunately, she cannot be here today. My name is Saiba Kaur, and I'm a sixth grade G CSO at Jefferson. I'm Sienna Matichuk. I'm a eighth grade CSO at Jefferson Middle School. I'm John Davis. I'm the seventh grade CSO at Jefferson Middle School. Hi, I'm Christine Brillhard. I am the advisor for Jefferson Middle School. Hello, my name is Taryn Bialma. I am a junior at Midland High School, and my fellow CSO is Jared Gonder. He is in 12th grade, but he could not be here today. Uh, Michael Cervinsky, CSO advisor at Midland High School. Hello, my name is Shichi Dar, and I'm an 11th grade CSO at Dow High School. I'm Ava Nelson, and I'm a uh, second year CSO at Dow High School. Hello, I'm Mary McLaughlin, and I'm a second year CSO at HH Dow High School. Hello, I am Tom McNamara, and I am the uh, advisor at Dow High. So tonight we wanted to just highlight the CSO program for you so that you kind of get a better understanding of what we do here in Midland Public Schools for the program and then regionally as well as nationally and internationally. Um, so some major goals of the CSO program are to really increase student voice in STEM in our communities. That's the top number one goal. You know, a lot of us have been, for a number of years, talking around a table uh, with a number of other adults in our region about how do we get students more interested in STEM? How do we get them excited about it, and how do we maintain that excitement over the years? Um, but we never really had students around that table with us. So then the CSO program allows these students to come to that table to voice their ideas of what, why STEM is so important to them, why should they care about it, and how they can maybe get their peers more excited about it so that we can fill that STEM pipeline that we're all talking about in our region constantly. So it's all about increasing their workforce and employability skills. It's about being able to engage their peers in STEM culture and career, career awareness, but mostly it's about giving them that voice in their schools, in the community for STEM. It is an international program, like I mentioned. Um, it began in Arizona in 2015, and I don't think at that time that Arizona was planning to have it grow to the size that it is today. Um, I think that maybe came as a shock to them, but it's been tremendous growth over the last few years, and it's been great growth over the last few years. So it started out with about 140 CSOs in the Phoenix region in Arizona, um, and today there are over 500 CSOs internationally. So it's here in the United States, in Arizona, Oregon, Michigan, in the Great Lakes Bay region specifically, and then also in Georgia. Um, there are a number of other states that are also looking at it. Currently there are also CSOs in Mexico and Kuwait with the UAE coming on board soon. Um, Canada is looking at it, Colombia, and some other nations as well. So it is growing drastically. This is our second year in the program. Um, this year we have about 62 CSOs represented throughout the region, um, Saginaw Bay and Midland counties. So that's kind of just an overview of where we're at right now. We anticipate growing a little bit more in our region, so probably about 75 CSOs next year. To give you an idea, last year we had about 50. So I think a growth of 10 or 15 a year would be, would be a good number to aim for. Um, 
I want to turn it over. I don't want to take all the time talking. That's why we brought all these wonderful students with us tonight. Um, but they, they're going to give you an idea of a year in the life of a CSO. What does it kind of look like? How does it start? And how does it progress through and then end? Good evening, everyone. I would like to tell you how we kick off the year as the CSOs. We kick off the year with the Summer Institute Leader Summer Institute Leadership Program. During this two-day institute, we learn team building exercises, networking with STEM professionals, and we learn what we're planning on doing for the upcoming school year. During this program, we connect with all CSOs from the Great Lakes Bay region. We also connected to the CSOs in Kuwait via Skype call. I'd like to turn it over to talk about what we normally do throughout the year. Hello everyone. As CSOs, we attend cabinet meetings, uh, which are essentially opportunities to visit STEM-related businesses throughout our region and learn about their work and related careers. Some, is, some businesses that have welcomed us for visits include Michigan Sugar, Next Year Automotive, Covenant Hospital, the Zilwaukee Bridge, and Herbert T. Doan Midland County History Center, where we learned about the Dow Chemical Company. Typically at these meetings, we will get a tour of the company and interact with their employees so we can learn about the different jobs that make their business work. This is definitely my favorite part of the trips, as it has made me realize that not all STEM careers are scientists and engineers, but they can also be farmers and nurses and mach machine operators. Um, at these meetings, we also have time to be together with our other CSOs from various schools um, and with all the other advisors as well to work on our action plans, which the Northeast CSOs will talk about. I truly appreciate and enjoy these cabinet meetings because I'm surrounded by the people who want to make a difference and help others understand the importance of STEM. Thank you, and I'll now turn it over to Emily from Northeast. Thank you. Our action plan at Northeast is to create a series of videos, STEM videos, which cover the different areas of STEM, which includes science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We have a plan that these videos will be informational and educational and of course entertaining. So then they will go out to the students and hopefully encourage students to take on STEM roles as they grow older. These um, videos will go to all the students at Northeast and be shown in their science classes. My action plan is to engage community members in STEM by doing STEM demonstration, which is basically a demonstration in STEM. Um, and as a school, we will be doing a crime scene investigation night, um, like with fingerprinting, to get people engaged in more of the detective work and stuff. My action plan is to bring a group, a group of kids to DeVita Dialysis Center to engage them more into the medical field. My action plan is to host a science cafe, and um, that's apart from a science Olympiad we have at Jefferson, but hopefully it's to get together a group of people and hopefully have a STEM professional come in and talk about STEM, and we can hopefully have some fun activities there. So for Midland High's action plan, first off, I would really like to express the honor it is to be part of this organization. It's great. Um, but for Midland High, we will be having our biggest action plan is going to be we are going to take a field trip and bring some computer science, math, biology, and chemistry students who are thriving, and we are going to take them to the MSU Research Center on St. Andrews Road. And so that's going to be our big event. Jared and I will be attending that and we will be organizing it. And also some little things that we're going to sprinkle in through the year is some demonstrations, which is the mini science experiments. And we will also be promoting CSO program at the parent-teacher conferences as well. Good evening, everyone. For the upcoming school year, me and my fellow CSOs are planning on hosting a STEM family night at one of the community um, areas. And through this, we're able to achieve and come become closer to our main goal as CSOs, which is to spread the knowledge and passion we have for the STEM careers. And hopefully we will have a couple of STEM professionals come in and talk about their careers and how it's so exciting and important for people to increase their knowledge and also have separate stations for kids to explore these careers for themselves. So 
that gives you a little bit of a preview of what we're accomplishing here right in Midland Public Schools. Um, I think they, they chose very good projects. This is all student driven. Um, I don't tell them what to do. We give them some ideas if they need it. Uh, and we're here to support them through Saginaw Valley State University. But it's really what the students want to do and what their peers want to do at their schools. Um, some other key portions for the year is really pulling together that community piece too. So you see that what they're, what they're doing at the schools, but we're also active in the community. Um, in the past, we have um, participated in the STEM Summit at Delta College. Uh, we've also presented at other school board meetings, um, for example, in Bangor Township and also in Carleton area. Uh, in addition to that, we have some CSOs who sit on the Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance STEM steering team with me. Um, actually, Ava, no, yes, Ava and Shichi, right? Am I missing anybody? Okay, so those are a couple of representatives from Midland that sit on that team with me. Um, and then in addition to that, we also go out and volunteer in the community. Um, we've had incredible national and international collaboration. They mentioned that we were able to Skype with CSOs from Kuwait during that Summer Leadership Institute, which I think is really powerful to bring those ideas together worldwide. Um, we were able to attend the STEM Ecosystems Conference with some CSOs from other districts out in, in uh, Washington, D.C. last spring. And we also went and represented at the National Science Foundation ITEST Summit last spring. This past fall, we were in D.C. again um, for a CSO International Summit, where we were able to interact with STEM professionals at Google. We met with the um, Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House. Uh, we did an amazing tour through the Smithsonian Institutes as well and got to interact with some of the scientists behind the scenes there. Um, and just had an amazing, amazing week in Washington, D.C. That's going to be an annual trip, so we'll be looking for CSOs to attend that again next fall. Um, in addition, CSOs have been active in our community right here, and I know Saiba wanted to talk a little bit about her volunteerism in our area. So at Delta College, I volunteered. Um, they had like a STEM festival where you could do demonstrations. Mm -hmm. um, and an upcoming event coming up this week is at Jesse Rouse Elementary in Saginaw. You can do different demonstrations and show them to elementary students to get them interested in STEM. And then to kind of round out the year in the life of a CSO, if you will, um, at the end of the year, we always have a CSO celebration where we get all of our CSOs from the region together to celebrate really what they've been doing throughout their schools, in their communities, and as a region overall. Um, Ava was nice enough to speak about that, la speak at our celebration last year, so I'm hoping she'll come up again. So at the end of the year, or I guess the school year, we had this event where, um, you know, we had a nice dinner and we had many speakers, including me, where we talked about um, like what we achieved this year and what we learned and what our favorite parts were. And there were also awards that were given for people who, um, you know, had the best uh, or I guess the most voted for um, categories such as like uh, events or where you went and people also spoke about the different trips they went on like the DC trip and all their field trips that they held. Hmm. We also asked at the CSO celebration for administrators um, to speak at that celebration and kind of get a, a feel for the impact that it's had in their district or in their school and we also asked for some teachers to speak at that celebration. Uh, this year to give a little teacher perspective to all of you we have Miss Lennon. I think the the thing that I like most about the CSO program is that the students really have to come outside of their comfort zone in a lot of different ways. For one student, it was going to the leadership conference in the summer was scary to her. And being around other students she didn't know from around the Great Lakes Bay region. Um, and so... You know, it was, a, it was an interesting experience for her to step out and say, hey, I'm going to go to this even though I only might know one person here, and I'm, I'm going to see how, how this works. Another thing with stepping outside of the comfort zone is, you know, you've got to carry out this plan from beginning to end on your own. And to me, it's, it's exciting because it's not like a contrived project that you would typically have in a classroom. 
Um, it's real life. You're doing real service to your community and to your students, uh, the students that are your um, colleagues, your your peers. And then, um, you know, lastly, just the leadership skills that they learn by doing this and, and standing up in front of their peers um, to show, hey, this is an important thing that you need to think about for yourself or your future. So um, I've enjoyed watching the, the um, my students go through this process, and I'm sure the other teachers have also seen the same sorts of effects with the ones they've worked with. Thanks, Jen. Um, this program is funded differently throughout the country. So in Arizona, schools actually pay per CSO. Um, for, our dist for our region here in the Great Lakes Bay, we're fortunate to have funding come from the Dow Chemical Company Foundation. They provide the majority of the funding for the CSOs. And then in addition, a small amount of funding came from Next Year Automotives that we were able to take two teams to Washington, D.C. this past fall instead of just one. Um, and then additionally, uh, if if schools would like more than two CSOs that are funded through our, through our foundation monies, um, they are able to pay a small fee for those additional CSOs. But we really appreciate all of the funding that we receive from Dow Chemical and Next Year Automotive for this program, in addition to the partnerships at all of those STEM businesses that we visit during the year. They're amazing, and they put on amazing days for our students. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And if you have a few moments, we'd like to open it up for questions on uh, the board. Would I, does anyone have a comment or question? I want to join. Can I join? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a really great opportunity and, and a lot of fun things and, and the idea that you get to create your own act, action plan of what you want to do is just so important. And then seeing it through to completion. I'm really proud of all of you. It's a really great job. We're always looking for community volunteers, mentors, <laughs> if you want to know if you're in the same business or industry. Penny's got my information, Allison has my information, I'd be happy to connect you. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, how, do you, how do you find the professionals that you want to come in and speak to the students or uh, engage in the, some of the programs and projects that the students create? Well, I can give an answer generally, and then I'll turn it over to them if they have specific ways that they've connected in. Um, for our cabinet meetings, I rely on a lot of networking skills that we teach these students during that Summer Leadership Institute. Um, over the past few years working with SVSU and the STEM programs, I've been able to build a lot of relationships uh, through Dow, Next Year, Michigan Sugar. Pretty much everywhere that I've gone over the past few years now is in the back of my mind and saying, ooh, they might make a great place to go visit with CSOs. Um, or I connect in with the Career Services Department at SBSU and I say, hey, do you have any connections that I can use? Mm -hmm. um, so they're super helpful there too. Um, CSOs, particularly if you're bringing in STEM professionals, did you have anything to add on how you connect with them? For example, last year, I was an eighth grader at Jefferson Middle School. I was able to hold a teen science cafe night, which is basically a night or after school activity where it's basically held by teens for teens, basically bringing in STEM professionals and talking through like what they do on a daily basis and how STEM is incorporated into their job. And for example, I had Next Year Automotive come and speak, which was a really brilliant presentation. It was really nice. And I ended up connecting with them through one of the trips we took. So one of the trips we took, we ended up going to Next Year Automotive, and I connected with some of the professionals there. And they had a lot of nice things to say, and I took down their information there. And then I got back to them within a couple like weeks just to see if they're interested in talking. So that's how I connected with the one from Next Year Automotive. Thank you. Great, thanks. Just to add to that real briefly, we try really hard to put it on the student to connect with those professionals. Um, they all have business cards that they can share with any professionals that they come across. Um, but the email address actually all comes to me, and then I filter it through um, just for safety's sake and always include the advisor on those emails too so that they're on the up and up and know what's going on too in their schools. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming out. And um, I, I feel that the chief science officers is, is such a great addition to the schools and uh, 
this opportunity that you've taken advantage of and the time and energy that you're putting into is not only good for uh, preparing you for your future, but I appreciate how you're bringing it back to your school and creating even more opportunities for st students at your school and, and really sharing the message about STEM. And um, it's, it's a great program and it's very exciting to, to see how engaged you are and, and what you're doing for our school. So thank you. Thank you so much for having us tonight. No, you're, you're great. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Thank you. It's like church now. You can all move forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can move into item 3.3, .3, which is for action. Uh, we have uh, Vietnam veteran Jimmy Sequin uh, to be graduated from Midland High School uh, with a 2019 diploma and he would walk with the graduation graduating class, is that right? Yep, so um, approximately 10 years ago, the legislators um, proved that schools could give uh, diplomas post to uh, veterans, um, and we have, Jimmy was a volunteer who spoke um, at Veterans Day to the students, and once we discovered this, some teachers and students went to action and figured out how he could graduate with us, and he meets all qualifications under legislation, so we need action from you to approve that. Okay. At this time, I'll accept a motion for item 3.3. .3. So moved. Support. Moved by Friedel, support by McFarland. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I guess I didn't open it up for discussion. Is there a discussion? Yes. I'm sorry. My, um, when my father-in-law was in his 80s, he was granted his diploma. He went into uh, World War II, never graduated from high school. So this is a good one, good one. He was just proud as could be. Absolutely. I was very excited when I, when I saw the message come across, and uh, I think this was what a wonderful opportunity, and it's even better that it came from the students, came from the school. Yep. And uh, what a great, great honor it is for, for us to have him join us. So now, if we could move into a vote. All in favor of approving item 3.3 .3 for... Um, Vietnam veteran Jimmy Sequin to uh, receive his diploma with the 2019 graduating class. Say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Item 3.4 is for action. It's consideration of contract ratification. Um, Mr. Sherrill? So as you know, um, we met with you in closed session last time to talk about some of the parameters of reaching a tentative agreement with the, uh, the Midland City Education Association. We did so for the 1920 and 2021 school years. Um, we had an outstanding relationship in working with them and reaching this agreement. A few highlights of the agreement is that in 2018-19, they'll receive a 1% off schedule wage increase. 1920, they'll present a 2% wage increase. In 2021, a 1% off schedule wage increase, and then a 0.5 to 1.5 percentage wage increase based on the formula of the fund balance to be as audited in 1920. We'll continue the, the present medical coverage and health savings as it has been going forward. So we are looking for your approval of that contract tonight. Okay, at this time I'll accept a motion for item 3.4, consideration of contract ratification. Make a motion. Support. Moved by Roush, support by Friedel. And is there any discussion or comment? I appreciate how both uh, both sides come to the table, uh, very uh, ready to work together and sharing information. And um, and uh, I'm very happy that we're able to come to an agreement so quickly. And appreciate the hard work on both sides for uh, making that happen. Agreed. Yeah. 
Okay, all in favor of approving item 3.4, contract um, consideration of contract ratification, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. We'll move into item 3.5, which is uh, student expulsion. Uh, Brian? I'll take that one. Yeah. A board subcommittee of two Board of Education members, Superintendent Sherrill, myself, and a Northeast Administrator, met on February 5th in regard to student A, who applied for reinstatement to the Midland Public Schools. It was the recommendation of the board subcommittee that student A not be reinstated at this time. Uh, the recommendation includes extending student A's expulsion until September 3rd, 2019, with off-site academic services to be provided throughout the period of the expulsion. Okay, very good. At this time, I'd accept a motion uh, for item 3.5, student expulsion extension. Moved, Moved by <coughs> Lauterbach. Yeah. Support. Uh, support by McFarland. <laughs> um, and we'll open it up for discussion. Um, I just wanted to clarify uh, extended and expulsion is extended until September 3rd. Do they reapply again at that time? Correct. Is that correct? Yeah, same process we went through this time. Okay, correct. thank you. Yep. I'll just add that uh, through this process, careful and appropriate consideration was made by the committee and restorative practices are put in place uh, in addition to, uh, to the expulsion. So at this time, we'll move into a vote. Uh, voting for an expulsion extension and 3.5. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. No. Item 3.6 is for action, door security devices. Uh, yeah, uh, Brian? I can take this one for you, too. Um, if you recall, uh, this fall we were honored to be um, a recipient of a grant from the Michigan State Police, a little bit north of $200,000. There were two components to that grant. One was window security safety film. The other was um, door lock devices. Um, the security safety film is not coming to you tonight because it falls below the bid threshold, uh, but we will be moving forward soon with getting that installed. Uh, the devices that are coming to you tonight are known as the boot, um, and we consulted with local law enforcement, did research, and also consulted with our facilities director to make sure the device was compatible with our doors, would help prevent the opening from inside and outside doors as well. Um, and we feel that this device was the one that best fit Midland Public Schools. Because of the amount, we had to put it out to bid, um, but because it is a unique device that we identified through the grant process, um, we only expected one bidder to happen because it is from the lockout company of Howell, Michigan. So tonight we're asking for your approval of a purchase for 687 of these boot devices. 244 of them will be installed um, before next school year. The rest will be installed after. Um, and we're waiting because the bond is replacing doors throughout the district and we don't want to put something on a door that we're going to be replacing real soon. So we're recommending tonight that we award the purchase order to the lockout company of Howell, Michigan for $174,943. All of these dollars will be reimbursed to us through that grant. Great, thank you. Yep. At this time, I'll accept a motion. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by McFarland, and um, open up for discussion. Thank you, Brian, for going ahead and securing that grant for us. Pleasure, thank you. Yes. What are the other Go ahead. 400 doors going to be replaced? What's the timeline for those doors? Sure. About some, of those, some of those would be like at Adam School, so um, I wouldn't tell you there's any one um, date for each of them. It's just as we're going forward, so Adams would be a big amount of those at one time. Some of the stuff that we're doing at the high schools might give us some more doors at that period of time. So it just depends on where we are in the, two in to the three process. Years. But we're I two just, to three years out before in, the, in all the secondary buildings, so... Uh, if you recall the bond timeline, um, the bulk of that works about three years done at that point. So somewhere in that ballpark is when all the doors that we are replacing will be done. Secondaries are last to go. 
Adams has done it, and all the elementaries will be ready. Okay. So can the device be uninstalled and reinstalled in a new door? So it's our recommendation not, but uh, we can take a look at that. But um, <coughs> you'd be doing, you potentially add a lot of cost, I think, because these devices go actually into the floors. And mm -hmm. it depend, you know, it's the alignment of the door, what doors bid. I think it's still unknown. But we can certainly look into it, but that wasn't, would be our recommendation, I think, at this time. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear more about how we could possibly install more of them. I know it's going to cost more money, I understand that, but if it's possible to uninstall them and put them in the new doors when the new doors are available and we have money for that, that would be something I'd be interested in hearing about. I know when we were talking in, in uh, the conversations about the 687 uh, boots, um, the, the conversation went around, you know, how, how do we go about uh, scheduling all that? And uh, we definitely, we talked about the, the, the boots going in the doors that were already established, but um, we talked a bit about the, the pricing and, and the reason why, you know, we you move forward at this pace, and it, and it seemed very... Uh, everyone in the committee thought it, it sounded like uh, the right move, but um, you know we can discuss it more. But I, I know the the pricing would be. We'll, we'll do our research yeah. and take a look at it. And get an yeah, I'm not back. saying That's anything about this. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with approval of yeah. this, but to put for the additional 400 on over the next handful of years, is there? What is the cost difference if we? put them all on, and then we removed them and put them on the new doors as the new doors were installed. Yeah. That's I all think, I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. We'll yep. do research. I think the bigger ones, if, if it can be done sure. at all, because these devices are kind of unique, so I'm wondering what it'll do to the facility if you if you different door, but we'll research that. Right. And, not, this and is not our expertise so in mm -hmm. any way, so we'll take a look at that. Very good. So, um, so for action tonight... We'll be voting on the purchase of the 687 boots, and and the as far as when they're when they're put on the doors. Um, 687 boots, but there are some being installed. Yes, that's right, correct. Right, yeah. as well. So okay. yes. All right. Okay, so at this time we will vote on this on the purchase of 687 boots to be purchased. Uh, for future installation uh, on the doors in middle and public schools. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, and it passes unanimously. Moving into item 3.7 for action, we have a network refresh with bond funds. Mr. Cooper? Yes, uh, with the technology, for lack of a better term, a network refresh, this proposal is going to place all the network switches, the uh, wireless access points, the uh, controllers, under power supplies and management software for the entire district. So this is not the pretty part you see, but all the stuff behind the scenes that keep it all working. Um, I can tell you the cost went to the load bidder, uh, $1,462,603.88. Um, I got Dave D secured, just in case you have more detailed questions, because uh, he's our expert on it and help uh, write the proposal and then um, pick the low better vector tech group, uh, which has offices in Freeland and Holland. Great, thanks. I'd accept a motion for item 3.7 for the network refresh with bond funds. So moved. Support. Moved by Fresnel, support by Letterbach. Okay, open up for questions or comments. This came in significantly under budget, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I think, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but half a million? Yeah. Roughly half a million under budget, what we budgeted. And then was there a grant out there to further supplement Correct. this yeah. cost? I'll let Dave go ahead and fill you in that. Um, so it comes e after the e fact. is something that comes from the federal government to prepare you, and so um, Dave is, has to write that grant to you, so we get funds every year from that E-rate. Yeah, if we applied for it, and if the board approves the purchase tonight, then we will finish the application and give them all the rest of the paperwork that we need to turn in. Um, we have until the end of March to do that, and then... Hopefully we will see back in the area of around four hundred thousand dollars. So 
to defray this further. It's fantastic. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Dave, how does the five-year program at a five-year cost of what is, is it? The initial of the one point four million, and then the cost for the maintenance. Yes. So it's five years of maintenance. It's five years of support and maintenance for the gear. Correct. Okay. Is that also warranty items in that? Mm -hmm. or? Yes, it is. Yep, the only one, there was one that would do 10 years, but it was uh, a bit of a bit more cost for that. That's not the standard. So, um, But the five years would get us at least through what the normal life of the equipment is at. Uh, we try to do that wherever we can. The average age of our equipment right now is 10 years old, and that is quite old for network gear. Uh, we, we milk it along as best we can, but um, some of it's upwards of 12 years now. So if we can get five years out of it, that's great, and then we kind of take it and, and nurse it from there. Okay. Okay, at this time, if there's more questions, we'll move into a vote for item 3.7, Network Refresh with Bond Funds. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, and it passes unanimously. Now we move into um, item 3.8 for action, which is furniture pur purchases for Adams Elementary. Mr. Cooper? Yeah, this is a slightly different order than I normally come to you at. Usually it's the cafeteria tables, the media center, and then the maker space. Um, this is a case where... Um, by purchasing now, and there's quite a lead time in the makerspace furniture. Um, it also helps us meet uh, a you know, price increase that's coming forward. So we're recommending same purchase, same national contracts, the Great Lakes Furniture Company of Holland, Michigan. We're $32,957, um, which is very, very similar to the last two that we did at um, Seabird and Chestnut Hill. So we were able to do that. There's a uh, um, five percent price increase coming March first, so we thought it best to bring this to you. The lead time on the makerspace has been long, um, just because the type of furniture it is. But this way, you'll be here plenty of time, and we get the same costs we've gotten at the other elementary buildings. I'll have to eventually follow up again with cafeteria tables and media center, but we're just not quite there yet. Great, great. At this time, I'll accept a motion for item three point eight furniture purchases for Adams. So moved. Support by Roush, support by Lauterbach, and open for conversation. And if we get it uh, enough ahead of time, we'll have a place that we can store it. Yeah, we'll have a place to store it. And lots of times the supplier will also hang on to it for a little bit. Well, you don't want to necessarily just have it where they're doing open construction. Right. So we just manage it uh, depending on how close it comes to start time. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you uh, had a conversation and found out that prices were going to increase and took advantage of timing and, and uh, saved us at 5%. So I appreciate that. There's no more questions. We'll move into a vote for item 3.8, furniture purchases for Adam Elementary's maker space. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Moving into item 4, which is request to address the board. Tonight we have Tanya Ross who has uh, asked if she could address the board tonight. So if you'd come up and introduce yourself. Tanya Ross, 3600 East Oak Brook. Um, paraprofessional for the last 19 years at Woodcrest Elementary and president of the para union for the last four years. And I'm here tonight to just thank the board, Mr. Sherrill, Mr. Cooper, and the HR department for going outside of our contract and giving us a couple of extra days on all of these horrible weather days that we've had. Our paras, um, your paras are some of the best. They work hard, they're diligent, they love their students, they love their schools. They're dedicated employees. And for you to show this good faith is absolutely wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, there's many of them here tonight. I want. I just want to thank them for all the hard work that they do. Thanks for coming out. It's always nice to have a group of folks come to the board meetings. We don't always have that, so a lot of energy in the room, and we appreciate uh, we appreciate our pair pros as well. So thank you. Are there any other uh, folks that would like to address the board tonight? Go on. Come on up, state your name, your address. 
Uh, Alley Noel, 904 Crescent Drive. So I have like three questions for Mr. Sharo. Okay, so uh, first of all, what are your thoughts on a balanced calendar? Well, so I don't normally comment at board meetings public session, but um, I certainly would prefer to answer these questions um, outside the meeting with you. So we okay. don't normally take time to do a question and answer, but okay. I can tell you real quick, I'm absolutely in favor of a balanced calendar, but I won't do that until the community tells me they're in favor as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, due to Principal Jaster's recent promotion, when is Midland High expecting a new principal? We have a timeline in place, and so a um, new principal, does, Mr. Jaster, doesn't leave his job until June 30th. So we have plenty of time to fill that, and we've already got plenty of applicants for that job. Okay. And then what is the current state on the whole snow day fiasco, and when will like, a final <laughs> decision be made, slash when do we find out whether or not the legislation is successful? I'm going to close the meeting with that tonight. Um, I Friday letter, so want, can you hang for that one? And yeah. Then we'll do that. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Allie. You just wanted her to stay for the whole meeting, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> went through all that stuff, yeah. Hi, I'm Nicole James, 317 Scenic Circle. And I was wondering, because I know my younger sibling is part of the new proposed language program at Adams Elementary where they are able to be exposed to Spanish, French, German, and also Mandarin. And so I was wondering if that would be implemented into the other, other elementary schools as well. Is that the plan? Well, yet to be known. So it's a pilot program, and we're going to do the same pilot one more year for sure. So we have a full Mandarin program going at um, Woodcrest, and you have the what I like to call a wheel approach at Adams with the four different languages. We'll study that after two years and decide the exact direction where we're going. If that is to be continued to be um, part of the language program in the elementary schools, would the, there be an option for the middle and high school students to learn Mandarin as well? Yeah, so again, the concept there is um, before we would put Mandarin in, you kind of got to prime the pump and get customers ready for it. And so if there's enough interest after exposed to an elementary and we could see that it would sustain a teacher, we would definitely expand that. So that is the concept. And so we'll study that as a ghost. But we, we would like that to happen, but we don't know if that will happen for sure or not. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hmm. I can't help myself with students, guys. I'm an old teacher. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> usually, um, usually when we have someone address the board, they address the board and not the superintendent. And then questions for the superintendent would be uh, offline at another time. But uh, we appreciate you yeah. being so open to our students. Um, yep. I'm sure they appreciate that as well. So are there anyone else that uh, would like to address the board tonight? Great, great. Thank you, students, for coming up as well. Um, we will move into item five, which is administrative services. We have, uh, do we have minutes for this? Yes, we do. We have uh, minutes by Mr. Blazy. On February 1st, 2019, Administrative Services Study Committee met. Uh, members present were myself, uh, John Lauterbach, Mr. Sharo, and Cindy Young. We were uh, had an exciting meeting uh, <laughs> talking about the NEOLA policy updates. At the February 18th, 2019 Board of Education meeting, Mr. Sharo will bring for action the Board of Education policy changes <laughs> to a number of middle <coughs> public schools policies as recommended by NEOLA in our 2018-2019 updates. NEOLA retains law firms to provide legal reviews of published materials and consults on policy updates in the spring and fall each year. Therefore, the legal accuracy and compliance of proposed revisions can be unequivocally guaranteed. Mr. Sharo and Administrative Services Committee members discussed the 41 board policies that have proposed changes. As seen in your agenda and in the minutes, I am not reading them. <laughs> Thank you. Please. <laughs> the policies that will be presented for updates at the February 18th board meeting will be included in the document for board members to review before the meeting. Next meeting, as needed. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 214 pages we got in our board packet this time, so it was an awful lot of reading, and those 41 policies were uh, a lot to review, but uh, I'm, it makes me very happy that we go with no, NEOLA 
and um, and that we have some great folks on our uh, administrative services team so that you can review those for us. Were there any uh, policies that you wanted to comment on individually, or are we good? <laughs> All right. I'm good. All right, very good. And that is for action. So uh, at this time, we will vote. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did we motion on that yet? No. We did no. not motion. I'll accept a motion for item 5.2, uh, board policy revisions. Oh, all right. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Now we'll move into item 5.2 for action. So we have the board policy revisions that we will vote upon. Do you want to talk about them, or is that nope. good what we just... <laughs> the minutes did very well. All right, the minutes did great. All right, now I'll accept a motion we'll for item 5.2. Like we'll review on each of them, so. <laughs> <clears throat> That's fine. But now I know what a relative is. Yes. <laughs> it's important. I, I'm... I move that uh, the proposed revisions to the board policies that are listed in the board packet be adopted. Great. Second. Moved by Lutterbach. Support, Support by um, Rausch. And is there any other comments? Seeing none, uh, we'll move into vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Moving into item six, which is finance facilities and operations, we have uh, 6.1, our committee meeting minutes, and Ms. Friedel will give us the minutes. We met on February 4th. Uh, myself, uh, Scott McFarland, uh, Ms. Singer, and Mr. Charo, Mr. Bruton, and Mr. Cooper were there. We also had uh, Mr. Dombro, uh, Barton Mallow, Mallow uh, via telephone and Dave Diesick were there and most of these things we've already approved um, <laughs> the uh, bids and purchases for the technology network infrastructure refresh bond project um, this, um, Mr. Downborough also briefly reviewed the press box plans and timing of the project which is currently out to bid and then Mr. Cooper reviewed the items of uh, furniture purchase and the December financial reports. And we meet again on Monday, March 4th at 5 p.m. Great. Thank you. And we'll move in item 6.2, which is for information, and it's the gifts. Mr. Cooper? Yeah, 17 gifts for you tonight, uh, totaling $17,009.40. You notice they're kind of grouped here from uh, particular groups. We have a couple of gifts from Charter and Target. Um, and then we have from the Dahai Athletic Boosters, the Midland County Youth Action Council at the Midland Area Community Foundation, the Midland Area Community Foundation. So you'll see quite a range there uh, of different types of gifts. I do have under 6.3 for your action, again, because of the size of the gift, um, from the Music Boosters at HH Dow, $5,500 for the music program support, and that would require your action tonight. Great, thank you. I'll accept a motion for item 6.3 for action to accept the gifts of $5,500. I move we accept the gift of $5,500. Support. Moved by Mary Friedel, support by Phil Rausch. Uh, is there any discussion? Seems like a no-brainer to me. <laughs> We're very grateful for all yeah. the gifts, for sure. All in favor of uh, accepting the gifts totaling $5,500 for Dow High Music Program. Say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Moving into item seven for human resources. We have 7.1. Um, who's going to take that? Yep, I'll uh, take that. Brian? Uh, we have condolences to pass along to four families this evening. First, the family of Ms. Esther Harnick, who passed away on January 23rd. Ms. Harnick was a secretary for 38 years at Midland High, and then school services at the Administration Center, retiring in 1994. Uh, to the family of Mr. Jim Hopsenberger, who passed away on February 3rd. Mr. Hopsenberger spent 34 years in Midland Public Schools as an art teacher at Jefferson School and as the coordinator of art education, retiring in 1989. He received the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Award for Worthiness in 1962. Uh, next, the family of Mr. John, John Roundhouse, 
who passed away on February 4th. Mr. Roundhouse worked for MPS for 28 years at Midland High and Northeast teaching German and English and later in his career as a counselor and a head counselor retiring in 1993. And finally, to the family of Mr. Daryl Crabb, who passed away on February 7th. Mr. Crabb taught PE at several elementary schools and then taught PE, geography, history, and also coached numerous sports, tennis, baseball, football, and volleyball at both Northeast and Jefferson for 35 years, retiring in 1995. Wow. And then for item 7.2, we have retirements to announce uh, to four of our employees. First, Ms. Nancy Barnes, counselor at Midland High, will be retiring on June 10th. Uh, Ms. Pam Dunford, a paraprofessional at Jefferson Middle, retiring on June 7th. Ms. Carla Cook, uh, special, ser special services supervisor, will be retiring on June 30. And finally, Dr. Linda Lipset, principal at Adams Elementary, who will be retiring on September the 6th. Thank you, Brian. Yep. <clears throat> and we'll move into item seven, which is scheduled activities for information, just a listing of the rest of our board me meetings for the rest of the year. Item nine, which is correspondence to and from the Board of Education uh, for information letters that will go out to uh, the folks that were uh, part of this board meeting. And then item 10, which is our study discussion session. It's a portion of the meeting where each board member can introduce topics um, for future study. So at this point, I'll start over here with Phil. I do not have anything uh, for study. Okay. You okay. can say comments, too, oh, if you want. You can all right. Do. I did have a couple comments. Um, first of all, I always love hearing the shining stars. It's always just an awesome demonstration of our, our wonderful employees in the district. Um, and congratulations to you and Mr. Hackbarth for uh, getting through the contract negotiations and, and uh, doing so in a professional manner. I think the relationship that you guys have formed has really helped those discussions. And as a first-time board member, it was always nice to not have to get involved. <laughs> so, um, and uh, I just want to pass along my support for the paraprofessionals and glad that we could find something that was equitable for this, uh, this time around and hope we can work together to uh, continue to make it equitable going forward. Brad? Um, because today's a significant day on the calendar, I'm going to start out with a quote. The best means of forming a manly, virtuous, and happy people will be found in the right education of youth. Without this foundation, every other means, in my opinion, must fail. George Washington, the first president of the United States of America. So, Mr. Washington's comments about education I agree with. Um, all kinds of things. Shining stars are CSOs, great presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, prayer professionals, thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you do. Um, passing of the boot, um, the ratification of the contract with Midland City Education, Mr. Hackbarth and, and your crew, as long as along with Mr. Sharrow, thank you for that. Um, excited about Mr. Jimmy Sequin walking with the 2019 graduating class of Midland High School. Um, thank you for the student comments. Those are always great, and uh, I guess on a little bit of a, a sadder note, but something of deep respect that I know, know all these people that passed away that retired from Midland Public Schools. Um, Mr. Hopp, he was my teacher. Uh, you could also put Sugnet Elementary on there as well as Jefferson. Um, he was my art teacher at Sugnet. Uh, great guy and great family man, and... Um, his artwork surrounds this whole entire community, whether you know it or not. It is everywhere, from the Tridge to Churches. Blessed Sacrament to all over the place. You don't even know all the places that he has artwork throughout this town. He decorated this town amazingly well. And Mr. Crabb, a uh, lifelong friend, and my driver's ed teacher. So... <laughs> so. All of you will be missed, and, and thank you for everything that, that your families and you did for middle public schools. Thank you. 
I would just like to congratulate um, the students that are participating in the CSO program and just the staff and the community. What a, what a sense of uh, enthusiasm I felt from all of them, the adults and the students and the opportunities and collaboration with the community and each other. It's, it's pretty amazing when you look at what age they are and what great things I, I'm sure will be ahead for, for them and for all of us in our, in our district. It, it's pretty exciting to see where that will head. And again, I always love to hear about the shining stars as well, and to Diane, Laura, and Marty, you know, the years of dedication that they all give, and it's nice to recognize them. And the paraprofessionals, I had a little taste of what you do every day. Um, I was down visiting my daughter, who's a fourth grade teacher, and I went into school with her for seven days. I was exhausted. So um, I was her paraprofessional, and she told me what to do. I did all kinds of things with these little ones. So, And I didn't need to, to go down there to know that. I, I know many of you, and, and you have worked with, my, worked with my children for the many years that we were in <coughs> the public school. So thank you for all that you do. And it's always nice to be able to support you. Today we went, before our meeting, we went over to Chestnut Hill and Seabird, and we were able to view their, um, their old gyms that are now their new media centers. And I think those of us that were there, I know for me, having spent 19 years with my kids at Chestnut Hill and being squeezed into that hot little teeny gym for all those years, to see what it is now as a media center, yeah, it's better as a media center than it was at Teeny Gym. It is absolutely beautiful. And for everyone that's involved with all that, it's just going to be an exciting learning environment for the kids, adults. I mean, I'd love to go over there and sit with a book or do, or do whatever. So um, it was just, it just amazes me to see how the art schools just keep evolving and um, it's going to provide some really top-notch education. And to Jimmy Sequin, I'm looking forward to that graduation. I just think that is just amazing. When I read that article, it just, it warmed my heart and um, well-deserved, and I, I look forward to, to seeing that happen. And to all the other good, great things that are, are happening in our district, um, there's always too many to mention, but uh, it's good to be here. And Great. Here. Thanks, Lynn. I support what's been said already. Um, the tour of the elementary schools was really cool to see that repurposing of old space into new new use, um, just phenomenal. And, you know, seeing the new additions as well. Um, the students are really um, blessed. We're really blessed to have that type of facility. And um, I just wanted to add that I think we're going to have a full week of school this week. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I like I like the idea. <laughs> I like the idea of maybe getting something as an online kind of learning experience for our students, so that it's just not lost days. I know I tried to work with my grandson every day to try to give him some schooling at home, but not all parents are home with their kids to be able to do that and. Uh, those days lost are days lost, and it's really important, even though kids don't get it. As a former teacher, I know it's really important that you have the kids all the, all the time that you can to uh, help them succeed and be ready for the next rung of whatever their education or, or job or whatever they plan to do. So um, I hope we can get something in place to uh, not make those days a total loss. Thank you. You know, by the time you're board member number six, yeah. there's no more original material. <laughs> <laughs> and last month I was sitting over there and you started going, oh. <laughs> I'll try to do better next time. <laughs> no, I, I, I want to also recognize the parapros. I, I got uh, some correspondence about that. And, and, you know, candidly, especially as a new board member, I had no idea that, you know, I, I know that at 530 in the morning, you know, at my house, it's good news when we have a snow day. You know, my kids are, are, are thrilled about it. But the, there are very real consequences to all of you. And, and so I want to I thank those of you that, that, uh, that reached out to me. And I, I think we reached the right decision, and, and we helped blunt the impact of that or reduce the, the adverse impact of that. I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to do that. So thank you all. Try being number, be number seven. <laughs> um, thank you very much to all our Paris, we, we really do appreciate everything you do. You guys provide an invaluable service that is 
often unrecognized. So it's nice to at least have a minute tonight to shine the light on you because you guys really deserve it. So hats off to all of you. Thank you very much. Um, I know Allie is on the edge of her chair waiting to hear Mike tell us about the snow days, so uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm going to love up. snow days. Hang on, I didn't even oh, get to say geez. anything. <laughs> <laughs> She's got lots of notes. <laughs> Oh, I'll, uh, I agree with, with what was said. Um, I'm excited most about the contract negotiations and, and how that worked out. I'm very excited about the bond work and, and visiting the schools, and it just gives me delight to go into the schools and see the energy and, and what has happened because of our community support in the bonds. And, it, well, you know, it's always been a dream of mine when our kids were in elementary school, even though we, our kids will never in, get to enjoy that space, that um, there's a, a whole new generation of kids that will be able to enjoy that space. And, um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, Paul Scholl tonight, when we were touring, said how uh, the staff... Um, just uh, really appreciates the the uh, the building and and what they're able to do with that now. So a lot of great things. Uh, last week I met with the Qantas Club, uh, the evening club, and there were a lot of folks in the room that are retirees from Dow or next year, uh, professionals, engineers, scientists, um, talking about you know how. They love to be engaged with the schools, and then listening to the CSOs tonight, it um, it excites me about the opportunities that we have in this community with our our professionals and the students, and having something student led, and and then having uh, <coughs> professionals, especially retirees, uh, come up and work alongside these students. So, uh, so many neat opportunities that we're able to take advantage of, and uh, if it weren't for the staff here at Midland Public and the extra hours and the extra dedication that they want to put into this, making this district great. Um, I'm just very proud of, of uh, the offerings that we have, and especially when we have students come and share such wonderful, wonderful programs. So um, heartfelt uh, um, sadness for those who passed away over 100 years of of Midland Public School family uh, experience there, and uh, they've they've left a legacy for sure. So, and and at that, I will pass it on to Mr. Cheryl. As I was saying, I lump uh, snow days or weather days, as I like to call them, into um, the conversation of our hourly employees as well. Um, you know, really, I think it's year 13 as superintendent, year 21 as a school administrator, and 33. And I've never called 12 snow days ever. Um, I really, I think we went back and tried to average, and Brian worked for me when Nelganak, I think we averaged two in southern Michigan and three or four here. And so um, the reason I state all that is most of our hourly employees have um, either contracts or handbooks who give them, give them some protection when you get about three or four. They, they don't get paid in the first two or three, four. There are some places that'll do it that way. And then you begin to pick up some. Um, and then this was an unusual year because it, she, most people think about, okay, day four or five, getting some pay for those people, and then you make it through the winter. Um, and that didn't occur. And so about day four or five, Mr. Cooper and I began to brainstorm how we might do this. And um, as Bob and I sa says, it's, it's ironic because I don't think most people knew way back then we were working on this all along um, and how we would um, help our employees do so. But I also, if you know my background, um, I was raised in a small family business, and I believe you go to work to get paid. And so I was trying to figure out how we would get those employees to, because I want, don't want to name, um, talk to our taxpayers who say, I just gave funds away for no one working. And so we were trying to figure out how to do that. And so we began with our non-affiliated groups because there is some more flexibility in that versus following a contract, which the parapros have a contract. As Tanya mentioned, we kind of went out of the contract, which there's some risk when you do that as well. And so we 
our bus drivers, we brought them in. We started all our buses who sat in sub-zero temperatures for four days. We moved them. We plowed the driveways. We cleaned the interiors of those. We brought in our preschool workers who are paid by the hourly who were hurting as well and had them work in their classrooms. Um, and we were working on some online training for our parents that we were going to offer them as well. And so um, Bob and I were working on that. And, and I think, you know, the other thing I'd like to add in Bob and I's defense of all of this is, um, you know, Bob's wife's a parent. I think sometimes people forget that. My wife was a para for 12 years before she completed a degree when we raised our children. So do I know what a para does? I do. And I worked in the schools a long time, and my wife was one. Um, and I myself was raised in a very uh, hourly employee family, and so I know very much on that side of it. And so I, I definitely feel for that side of that piece of it. On the student side, instruction, lost instructional time is something dear, dear to hold my heart. Um, every morning, I think sometimes the students wonder why I might wait till the next morning or the evening before. It's because if at all possible and it's safe for the students, we should go to school. I'm a big believer that the 1,098 hours should be protected as much as we can. Uh, we already have too many distractions, too many hours in schools to meet the growth that we need to have with these students. On our teacher side, they're now measured every day by the progress and the growth of every student. They lost 12 days. And they didn't just lose 12 days. They lost these sequences of time to be able to progress their kids. Our principals, their evaluations based on how those students grow as well. And get try guess what? 40% of my evaluation that you do is based on that student growth as well. So we need to protect that instructional time the best we can. I've actually argued with our legislators for years to say there should be no such thing as a weather day. We should have to make them all up. Now, that students make me very popular with students <laughs> right now, other teachers maybe. But I, I've always believed that um, schools should probably build 190 days in their calendar and have, Bob calls them maybe days, I think is what you named them. M days, and that um, if you didn't need them, then you knock them off. And so I actually think if you've been following Lance's discussion of Lansing, there's some talk about that. This year may have forced what should have been happening. And I've talked to our legislators before about this. Let's go ahead and fix the pre and post Labor Day at the same time. If we're going to do this, let's do the whole calendar. So your answer to balance calendar is I absolutely believe in it. I absolutely believe in this state it even makes more sense to do. We ought to take about two, three weeks, and if not the whole month of December, and then come back and um, extend through the year, take July off, extend through the year, and we do that. Um, so I think it's, it, the research is clear. Students would learn better um, doing that process as well. Where do we stand? Um, we I finished the waiver last week for the three addition to the six. So you're get forgiven six. Um, the, if you've watched that at all, the state superintendent, the interim state superintendent, has says she will grant all those. She's pretty much said that. So you probably can expect we'll be forgiven for nine, which means we need to make up three. Um, which is a negotiated topic with the teachers as it's a work condition. Mark and I have had an early discussion, and, and we've kind of told the public, prepare for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 10th, 11th, 12th, if that's the right date, I believe it is, of June, that we'll, we will begin to plan that we're going those days. But there is legislators who say they may forgive us two or three of those emergency days, and I've heard, read both. I've read that... Um, the emergency was only two days, and I've read the emergency was three, so it's yet to be known what we'll, we'll do there. And by the way, it's middle of February, and we're still not through. So mm -hmm. that week of June, I think it's best that you begin to plan that we'll be in school during that week, at least a few days, if not more. P poses a problem with construction, and so basically summer construction schools are 48 days long. It's a long time to renovate a school from top to bottom like Adams. Um, do some of the work we're doing in the high school, so we're also going to have to um, get creative on how we're doing that. We're pulling some areas ahead in the secondary buildings, and um, Adams, we may have to take a look and see if we um, release them early, release, um, don't bring them back on the first day, or can it be done without incurring huge costs, which the contractors will say, we get it done. It's just going to cost you a lot more because we're going to have a, a lot of overtime in doing so. So we're going to have to work through that as well if we, we continue to use more days. One of those snow days was count day last Wednesday, and so we uh, are able to um, redesignate a count day with our people count on, and that was last Thursday, so we are clear through there. 
Uh, as mentioned earlier, the press box is out for bid. The design came back. I think all our users are very comfortable with it. It's, a, it's a, basically a single floor design. They extend basically from the 30 to 30 yard line, a little longer than we've seen. Um, that previous press box was kind of narrow and tall and stood. Um, I think this is going to fill out the bleachers a little nicer. There is several um, um, addendums to it where we can accept some of the other alternates. It, it, um, if they come in where we can afford them, one would be to extend that press box with some um, um, cosmetic look to close in the bleachers as well. And so we have some options to take a look at when we get when we begin to get bids back. So that is out presently. We had um, five general contractors who came in who were interested in that. So we'll see if all five bid or not. Um, on that project. Um, busy space this summer at the community stadium because not only will that press box be going up, but we will also be um, resurfacing the track, which is under a warranty. This, the resurfacing of a couple of years ago did not hold, and we've been able to work through with that contractor a complete resurfacing under his warranty, and as well as the scoreboard sound system, which is going to be one going up this summer as well at the stadium. And then in the future, we got turf replacement and we have um, home site bleachers that need to be replaced. So those are coming in the next few years as well. The Dow High Event Center that we've heard a lot of discussion about, I've been trying to keep you up to date on that. It looks like they are gaining some momentum. I'm not sure where it's going, but they are going public and beginning to raise funds. I know at this point and see where they can continue with those pieces of it. Bond Series 2, so we, we, we've been working off Bond Series 1 for a number of years. Bond Series 2 goes to sale this spring, and so Bob, Brian, and I, and Lori have been busy with all kinds of financial stuff to begin to prep for that um, sale, which is going this spring. We have a due diligence call this uh, week, uh, which is basically getting the PR portion of the uh, bond ready for those prospective buyers of the bond uh, going forward. And that is all I have. Great. Very good. Thank you. Oh, I did forget one. We have Mr. Jaster with us tonight as a student brought up. And so Mr. Jaster will be um, moving office locations next summer. And we have had the high school principal position posted for a little over a week, I believe. Um, 10, 11, 12 candidates in there today. Um, a, a few very uh, uh, nice ones to look at. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, we've been interviewing for our HR position as well, so we've been kind of busy around here, even despite snow days or not. That's what we've been. Uh, and, and you know, I'm gonna give Bob and Mike and um, some credit on this too. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize 4:45 we're usually on the road in the morning, and we still work to seven or eight in the evening. We don't get to get off work on those days either. So it's been some long weeks. You know, uh, even Bob, who I don't think has ever taken a sick day before, took a half day sick day last week on us. So there was a long week for like the last couple of weeks for all of us. So thank you. Thanks for putting those hours in and getting out on the roads when we don't have to. So. All right, well, if uh, everyone's ready, uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Support. Moved by Friedel, support by Lauterbach. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And this meeting is adjourned.